Now, the South African Human Rights Commission in Limpopo is conducting a fact-finding visit as part of its monitoring mandate at Mbiri Secondary School in the Rembe District Municipality after it was reported that a learner from the school has met her untimely death after being bullied by a fellow learner. To talk to us about this and the seriousness of bullying in South African schools is South African Human Rights Commission uh, Limpopo Provincial Office Manager Victor Marindula and the advocacy manager at uh, Women and Men Against Child Abuse, Luke Lamprecht. Good evening to you both, and thank you very much for your time tonight here on the Newsfeed Late Night. Victor, I'll begin with you. I mean, the family calls it an assault uh, by uh, a learner happening at that school. Uh, there has been reports from the Department of uh, uh, Education saying, well, it's, it's bullying. Bullying in its broad definition is the use of power to... Uh, 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 intimidate and, and, and cause harm uh, to another. How would you describe the incident of what you saw happening at B? Uh, thank you very much, Chavo and the viewers. Um, we, as the Human Rights Commission, we are tied with the incident. We, when we immediately after watching that particular video clip, we felt that it is necessary for us to intervene as the Human Rights Commission. We went to the school today we managed to interview the staff members uh, together with the principal and the two deputy principals. We also interviewed some other workers from the school and uh, learners. The reason for our interview is that we wanted to ascertain as the Human Rights Commission whether the school management have done everything they could to prevent what had happened. We we, we, we were shocked with the manner in which the case had been handled. And uh, I can say that uh, during the meeting, our tears nearly came out because we felt that indeed, if this, this matter was, was, was handled properly, this particular learner was not going to lose her life. So we were very much affected by this case and we are going to make sure that the department do everything in its powers to prevent the recurring of this particular uh, incident. We were also shocked at Tabo because when we, we learn about this matter, then when the community learn about our visit to the school, they started sending us other videos mm. of what had happened prior to that one, mm. which means that the, the, that is not only one incident in that particular school. There so are th this, other this, this in itself is not an isolated case uh, that uh, we are dealing with here. But talk to me about what elements you're picking up that tell you that the school did not handle this the way that they were supposed to have handled it. And we'll bring Luke in in a moment. Yes. What, what happened was that uh, the principal was informed. After those le the, these two learners uh, uh, fought each other, the principal was informed. But the principal referred the matter to the uh, teacher's licensing officer to handle the matter. And the, when the teacher's licensing officer realized that this matter cannot be resolved immediately because the other one was crying, saying that I feel unprotected. This other one is going, the, the perpetrator is going to assault me again. Now I don't know what to do. But the principal did not make follow up to find out how the matter was resolved. And the learner was sent back to the classroom to continue writing the exam. And she didn't go to write exam. No one bothered to find out where she, she was, only to find that she was outside the classroom crying, out, out, outside the classroom crying because she could not go back to the classroom <coughs> because she felt unprotected. And as a result of that, if the principal, in fact, the moment the principal realized that there is an assault case here, we believe that police were supposed to be called and take decisive action. So the learner felt that there's nothing she can do. Teachers are not providing the necessary support or protection. The principal is not uh, uh, providing any support. And the perpetrator is saying to the, to the learner in front of the, the teachers, in front of the, 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 those other staff members who were trying to attend to the problem, that she, she continued insulting the victim, by the way. Mm. She uh, continued insulting the victim and uh, promised to do what she was doing outside the school. So we, we, as much as we can condemn the video, taking of the videos and everything, I believe that if this video was not there, we're not going to know the reason why this child have taken her life. So 
I, we just feel that as the Human Rights Commission, the Department of Education did not, is not doing enough yeah. to prevent the, this kind of things happening from our schools. All right, look, let's bring you in here. I mean, what, what do you make of this? The learner felt unprotected. Uh, the principal was informed. Uh, there was no follow-up. Uh, back to the classroom, you go, write the exam. Uh, she did not write the exam, but no one even picked up that she did not uh, write the exam. When you give your own analysis of the situation here, uh, what do you make of what is going on in that school? Look, the first point I want to make is back to your initial question on the difference between bullying and assault and the Department of Education calling it bullying and the parents calling it assault. It's a very, very significant distinction because in terms of the children's act section 110 people like uh, teachers and principals must report children being abused to the relevant authorities now the problem in this case is that if they call it bullying it, the, for them it doesn't fall under abuse because we minimize the impact of these things by calling it bullying when in fact this was an assault and if they had have involved the correct authorities at the beginning, as was being suggested by Victor, we would have engaged in the child justice systems. In other words, the offending child would also have been offered assistance to deal with behavior that led to the offense and her coming into conflict with the law. And then the idea that this young, this young girl who sadly took her life found that she was in a world that was so unsafe and unkind and unfriendly that the idea of not being in the world was more palatable to her than the idea of being in the world is just an absolute tragedy. And if we look at the, the basic analysis of it, is it seems to me that what has happened within the education system, right from the comments by the Department of Education, minimizing what happened by calling it bullying, that has led to the, the fact that the school didn't act decisively because when children bully one another, we see it as not serious. And the big problem with that is that it denies even the offending child the opportunity to access services that are restorative justice in nature rather than punitive. So the whole system has let both children down significantly. From the Human Rights Commission point of view, Victor, what is the plan of action when clearly the school is unable to control even the perpetrators uh, within the system. So what we have realized is that, uh, because we feel that this is a systematic problem in the province, because since this incident came out in to, in, in, uh, from the social media, we are receiving many cases now from other schools. And even tomorrow we are visiting another school uh, for fact-finding mission. What, what we are going to do, we are planning to, to have a hearing, a provincial hearing on bullying. So we are going to look at all the contributing factors and what is that the department maybe should do to prevent this from happening. Because I think the most important thing is that we must understand that when a child behaves the way the perpetrator behaves, there might be underlying factors that might have influenced that particular child to behave that way. And that child, particular child needs help. So... <clears throat> Looking at all these incidents, fighting each other in the school, and the principal also not reporting those things, we understand action can be taken regarding those things, but we have a bigger problem here, societal problem that needs to be resolved. What is that we can do? Because the issue of discipline in our schools, uh, the issue of violence in our schools does not need only the principals and the educators. It also needs parents to be there, the school governing bodies, all of us, we need to join hands. What is that we should do as a society, as a country, to prevent this from happening? I think to, to, we understand there is a loss of life that is really touching. But the question that we need to ask ourselves, from this is a learning curve to all of us. We should not undermine if your child, a taboo, is coming home saying that I've been bullied or somebody is assaulting me from school. Don't think that the child... You don't send the child back to school without doing anything. You need to involve the teachers, the principal of that particular school. That matter needs to be investigated immediately. We don't have to wait because sometimes when the child resorts to tell the parents that, you know, so-and-so is beating me up at school, I don't know what to do. The moment you think that, you know, I will attend to it, I'm still busy, I will do this and that tomorrow, you will find your child facing the same situation because at that stage you might find that she's not getting protection from the parents, from the teachers, from anyone. Then this is what is happening because 
the, 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 the teacher's license officer said, this child cried mm. and said, I, what am I going to do? I'm tiny. I can't fight the, my, uh, 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 the perpetrator. Yeah. I cannot fight back. What am I going to do? Yeah. At look, that time, the principal is nowhere to be found. There's no one to assist her. Look, opening a case against the perpetrator seems to me like it's the easy way out for the school, who, to an extent, they also should take a degree of responsibility here. Yes, w w our, that is exactly our view. Yes, look, I think... Yes, look. look I, think two, I think there's two things to answer due to that. So the, the, the first is that if a case was open prior to this tragedy, we would have been able to access restorative justice services for the, the offending child. Because now the problem we have is we now have a death, which increases the severity of the crime. Plus, we, we no longer have a surviving victim. So my concern is that in order to prove some point, that this young, this young woman who should have been given access to some kind of restorative system via the criminal justice system is now going to be prosecuted for something much more serious because the victim is now deceased. The second thing is that in terms of Section 110 of the Children's Act, it is in fact an offence to not report it. But the problem is, is we are not getting any prosecutions, we're not getting anybody charged when the adults fail in their duty of care towards children by not reporting to the relevant authorities. And we need to remember that the reporting is not there to persecute the perpetrator or to, or to sort of throw that child to the wolves. It's actually there to open a set of services to those children because their behavior is telling us they are in trouble. Before we get to the circumstance where that child makes another child's life so unbearable that that child believes that being not in the world is more viable than being in the world. Look, I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us, as well as Victor, the South African Human Rights uh, Commission, Limpopo Provincial Office Manager there, Victor Marindula, and uh, Advocacy Manager at Women and Men Against Child Abuse, Luke Lambrecht.